Hello viewers, on your request, today I am going to tell you how we can conduct content analysis in research. This approach was very time consuming previously. Analysis was done manually in content analysis and people use punch card through human coders. You can see this picture of a punch card in my slide. This slide shows you that how the concept of content analysis or this methodology developed by the time. In 1940s, very few researchers used content analysis as a research method. Then, during mid-1950s, researchers tried to find sophisticated ways of doing content analysis, focusing on concept rather than just words. Then this concept advanced by the time and in 1959, researchers focused on semantic relationship. This means that the researchers tried to develop the meaning of the data and the relationship between the words. Basically, content analysis is a systematic reading of a body of text, images, and symbolic matter, not necessarily from an author's or user's perspective. Now, let me tell you what is the use of content analysis in research. Content analysis is really distinguished from other kinds of research methods in social sciences. It does not require the collection of data from people, like survey method. However, like documentary research, content analysis is the study of recorded information or information which has been recorded in text, media or physical items. Systematically, we collect data from a set of texts which can be written, oral or visual. So you can collect data from books, newspapers, magazines, speeches, interviews, web content, social media posts, photographs and films. So there is a very wide scope of content analysis. Then you might have a question in your mind, then when we need to use content analysis? So here, it reveals international differences in communication content. It can also detect the existence of propaganda in written posts. It can also identify the intentions, focus or communication trends of an individual, group or institution. It can also describe attitudinal and behavioral responses to communication. It can determine psychological or emotional state of persons or groups. That is why content analysis is very widely used in mass communication and in psychological studies. Then, I am telling you what are the different types of content analysis. Here, content analysis more broadly has two types qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative content analysis basically focused on facts from the text are presented in the form of frequency expressed as a percentage or actual number of key categories. So basically it focused on quantitative measures of words and the other texts. Then mainly in this lecture we are going to focus on qualitative content analysis. Qualitative content analysis has two main branches, conceptual and relational. So what is conceptual content analysis? In conceptual analysis, a concept is chosen from examination and the analysis involves quantifying and telling its presence, also known as thematic analysis. Here, in conceptual analysis, the focus is on looking at the occurrence of selected terms within a text or texts, although the terms may be implicit as well as explicit. On the other hand, in relational content analysis, you begin with the act of identifying concepts present in the given text or set of texts. However, relational analysis seeks to go beyond presence by exploring the relationships 
between the concepts identified. Relational analysis also been termed semantic analysis. Now I'm going to tell you some of the terminologies which we need to understand before doing content analysis. So here are the first terminology that is called condensation. Condensation is a process of shortening the text while still preserving the core meaning. Then code, you also need to know what we call code. A code can be thought of as a label, a name that most exactly describes what this particular condensed meaning unit is about. Usually one or two words long. Then comes here categories. What is category? Category is formed by grouping together those codes that are related to each other through their content or context. In other words, codes are organized into category when they are describing different aspects, similarities or differences of the text content that belong together. Here you can see in this figure, the middle column shows the categories. So there are many codes in the first column and in the second column, you can group those codes which are similar by generating one category. Then what are themes? A theme can be seen as expressing an underlying meaning that is a dormant content of your text or whatever the text you are analyzing. It found in two or more categories. Naturally, your themes emerge from your categories. A theme answers questions such as why, how, in what way or by what means. A theme is also intended to communicate with the reader on both an intellectual and emotional level. You can see in this picture that after coding, one may develop categories. Then from the categories, we may develop by synthesizing themes. And finally, we can generate theory on the basis of all the process. And it goes from specific to general. Now I'm telling you the procedure of conducting content analysis. So here you can see this picture. This picture shows you that what are the steps or stages in the process of content analysis. So the very first stage in content analysis is decontextualization. The researcher must familiarize him or herself with the data and he or she has to read through the transcribed data to obtain the sense of the whole. Basically here, you need to develop the meaning from the data, that is to learn what is going on in the situation. Each identified meaning unit is labeled with a code. And I have told you earlier that word code is, which should be understood in relation to the context. After the meaning unit have been identified, the researcher has then to check whether all aspects of the content have been covered in relation to the aim. So basically what you need to do here, you need to read the text again and again. And after finding out the meaning unit, you need to connect the meaning units with your research aims. So this figure shows you the procedure of conducting content analysis. On the left side you can see that it is manifest analysis. That means you need to find out what has been sent. Then you need to develop coding, you need to compare, you need to uh, come up with the categories and finally the themes. And on the right side of this picture you can see that there is 
latent analysis. That means which data is dormant in your text. What intended to be said. Here you need to find out the meanings from the text. So in recontextualization, you will link your data or your meaning units with your research objectives. In the third step, which is categorization. Here, the researcher can begin to create categories and I have already explained what categories are. These are extended meaning units must be condensed. This entails that the number of words is reduced without losing content of the unit. After that, the identified themes and categories should be internally homogeneous and externally heterogeneous. This is very, very important which means that no data should fall between two groups nor fit into more than one group. This means here you need to categorize or subcategorize the meaning units with the exact coding which they belong to. So they should not be fitting into more than one coding or categories. Then in the fourth step, which is the step of compilation, you need to draw realistic conclusions. Here the researcher start writing up the process. The investigator must consider the data collected from a neutral perspective and consider their objectivity. So the researcher need to play on two fields, on the neutral perspective as well as on the objective perspective. The researcher has a choice between the manifest and the latent level of analysis which you can see on the right side and on the left side. In a manifest analysis, the researcher often uses the informant's words or the voices of the participants. However, on the other hand, a latent analysis invites the researcher to immerse him or herself to some extent in data in order to identify hidden meanings in the text. This means in latent analysis, the researcher need to play his or her role while finding out the meaning from the data or the hidden meaning from the data. This is one of the very good example that shows you that how from the data we develop the meaning unit, then how we condense to subcategories, then to categories and then to themes. So first of all, I'm reading this text from an interview for you. Here the participant said, cannot do what other healthy persons do. I lose touch with people. I feel lonely. When I feel bad, I do nothing. I can never be really sure that tomorrow will be a good day. I do not know how I will feel tomorrow or how I will feel next week. Cannot do what other healthy persons do. Lose touch with people and social isolation. So here you can see that this is the text from an interview. Now from that meaning unit, we condensed that meaning unit in the next column. Here I did not put all the meaning unit, I just, I just extracted some of the important chunks that is lose touch with people, cannot make plans, I feel lonely, I will never know how I feel. These four sentences can make the complete sense of the previous text. In the next step, you can develop sub subcategories. For example, now I reduced the previous column into only two words. I reduced to lose touch with people, glad to be alive. These two reduced categories are conveying the whole meaning of the previous columns. Now, in the fourth column, I develop the categories. These categories are social isolation and happy feelings. So the participant all the way in the meaning unit was talking about social isolation and his or her happy feelings. Then these two narrow categories can be converted 
or emerged with a theme which is called an experience of loneliness related to social isolation. So this theme exactly is a representation of the meaning unit which was consisted of many sentences of text. So we reduce to one line. So this is the process of doing coding, then from coding to develop subcategories, then categories and themes. So in content analysis, we used to do the same process from coding till the emergence of the theme. Thank you very much. I hope you like this video and you maybe have an overview that how you can conduct content analysis. If you have any questions or comments, please do write in comment box. Thank you.